I uh, don't have a cute intro for this. I couldn't think of one. Um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, first episode. It's pretty good. It's a little bit odd to come into this uh, coming off of WandaVision, because despite my uh, criticisms of the back end of that, full breakdown there, if you haven't seen it on the Council of Geeks channel proper, the um, the thing about this is it, it's so straightforward, it kind of threw me off. Uh, which doesn't make it bad. I think WandaVision had the odd impact of kind of setting you up to expect something different from the Disney Plus shows other than just a long-form version of what plot-wise could have been a movie. And that seems to, at least so far, largely be what Falcon and the Winter Soldier is. And that's not a bad thing. But I can see why the original plan for the release of these was to have this come out first. Because this would have been a gentler ease out of the, well, it would have been coming on the back of Black Widow if things had gone uh, the way that uh, Marvel and the MCU was originally supposed to go before the plague happened. But now having the, the kickoff for coming back to the MCU be WandaVision kind of, it puts this one in an awkward position through no fault of its own. There are a lot of small things I like about this, but this is purely a setup episode. It is establishing where these two characters are, a couple things about the status of the world, and giving us some threads to pull on going forward, and a couple of action beats. And that's kind of it. It's not the kind of premiere episode that you would go back and watch, like, for fun. I don't expect this to end up being a highlight of the thing as a whole. So, I'm sorry, I'm distracted now because there's a dog I'm keeping an eye on who is just getting in the way right now. You're painting my butt. Yeah, you are. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the, um, the things that I liked about this are a lot of the little touches about giving us a sense of where both Sam and Bucky are at in terms of Sam coping with having come back from the blip, which I still don't love as a term, but it's what they're calling it, so I'm going with it. So, um, bringing us more up to date with the kinds of things going on with him and his life in terms of, you know, not understanding ways in which the world has changed in the last five years, because for him, he's just, he was gone and now he's back, but things aren't quite the same. His, his nephews are way older. The just the outlook of the world isn't what it was before. And uh, sort of delving into that a little bit more deeply, which is actually done pretty well in contrast to what happened with Monica Rambeau in WandaVision. So I, I do like that the Disney Plus shows are exploring what it was like for the people who came back. And that's now spanned across a couple of different shows. I, I actually quite appreciate that, especially because I don't think it's the kind of thing that they'd really ever have time to delve into much in the movies. But it's, it's nice to see explored here. Now, technically, Bucky also went in the blip, but for him, that almost would have been old hat because his experience being the Winter Soldier was basically being on ice anytime he wasn't being sent out to kill people. So losing years at a time is actually kind of his normal. So where he's at and coping with his things is coming to terms with what he did while under Hydra's control and trying to make some kind of amends for that. While at the same time, you know... It, the making amends, you really get the sense it's kind of going through the motions. He understands that it's a good thing to do, and it's something he should do, but his heart doesn't really seem to be in it. He's just checking off the boxes for, like, maybe this will help. And it was interesting to see him interact with, um, with this older guy, because initially, you know, they were getting along, and my initial thought on that was that, oh, it's kind of like how Steve... Uh, really got along with the older veterans because he related much more to their life experience than with people who were closer to what Steve's physical age was at that point. And there's probably a little bit of that, but then by the end of the episode, we realize part of why Bucky is 
you know, hanging around with this old guy is he killed his son when he was working under Hydra as the Winter Soldier. And the guy's on his list to try and make amends to, but he's putting that one off. He can't quite bring himself to do it. So that that's giving us a good sense of where he is. I also like his shrink. I like I like um, in shows and movies a, uh, a shrink or a therapist or a psychologist who has a look. Don't mess with me. Knuckle down and do the work. Attitude, um, as opposed to you know sort of the if you were gonna mock therapy, the mockery version of that is they just go. And how does that make you feel to everything? I, at least in my experience, the reality of these things is ideally somewhere in the middle. You know, how does that make you feel? Let's figure out why you feel that way. Come on, work with me. Um, but, you know, I, as, a, as a viewer, I enjoy the, for lack of a better way to put it, kind of hard-ass therapist, psychologist sort of thing. I like it as a trope. So I'm enjoying her. The action scenes, so the major set piece action scene is uh, Sam recovering a, uh, a kidnapped official, and it's good. I'm realizing that I've, I've hit a point in my life where an action scene needs to really do something special to grab my attention, because otherwise my brain kind of checks out a little bit. Um, unless it really does something to knock my socks off. And that's not a knock on the action scene. It's a good action scene. But it's just kind of where I'm at in my life. I'm like, okay, there's going to be a fight. I'm going to care about the outcome of this. Like, who who wins, loses, gets away, whatever. But as far as the process of it, I'm a little bit less engaged. And it kind of becomes white noise. But again, I think that's a me issue, not an issue with the... Um, with the action scene in and of itself. It's the kind of action scene I would probably have enjoyed more seeing it on a, on the big screen because, you know, I it, it's much harder for me to be distracted in a movie theater, in the dark, with a big screen, literally the only thing I can see. But, you know, when, uh, when I'm watching from home, it's easier for me to just kind of zone out and let my mind wander, look over at, uh, at you know, outside the window, and, oh, look, uh, Plants are starting to bud, you know, stuff like that. It's it's just easier to to check out a little bit. So I, I part of me, and I this is probably just me. So this, what I'm about to say, probably isn't actually what they should be doing. But like from my perspective, I'm left wondering: is it a little bit of a mistake to try and replicate the theater spectacle in a TV show? On the one hand, it's very impressive. On the other hand, part of what makes that spectacle be more than just kind of action white noise is that the, the visual scale of it is so big physically in front of you on this massive screen. And take that away and it kind of loses its impact a little bit. So I, I don't know how action heavy this is going to be. I'm hoping not too much, only because, again, like I said, the action scenes, I... I didn't completely check out. I wasn't bored by them, but I wasn't as... I, my mind wasn't making connections and going like, oh, okay, 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 the way that it was when we were just diving into the characters a bit more. Um, I do like that they bought, brought back Batroc Zeliper. <laughs> like, that's just kind of fun that, that he came back and he got away so he can turn up again. They've, uh, they've planted the seeds for the organization that uh, these two are ultimately going to have to combat together. They haven't even, you know, started working together yet, but obviously they're going to. But sort of setting up this thing with, like, the red hand thing and the mask and whoever, the leader who's in that mask has obviously got some kind of abilities. I like what they lay out as the underlying... Um, philosophy for this group. Now, I won't be shocked if later on like that ends up being uh, just the cover that they use to recruit people and they're really after something else. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. But at its core, it's the kind of notion that I could see people gravitating towards. Because the idea is that they thought the world was better during the blip. 
or after that, when half the population was gone, because out of necessity, because suddenly you're down half the population of the entire planet, people, nations, had to come together and rely on each other a lot more. We don't have a complete picture of that. I don't think it was suddenly like everything became borderless. But, you know, when you're suddenly missing half the people you were counting on to keep your economy, your infrastructure, and just basic necessities up and running, yeah, you're going to need help and each other's help. So I can see how once everyone comes back and it kind of returns to the status quo of national tensions, that there would be people who would idolize the time when that wasn't so much the case. Nostalgia is a powerful thing, and particularly for a political movement, there's a reason why the general concept of we need to restore a past glory is so compelling to a lot of people, and why it tends to attract people more willing to go to violent ends because if you feel like the world has changed into something you don't want and you want to wrestle it back to a previous state of the world, well, you need to be prepared to literally fight the tide. And fighting is what uh, these kinds of movements with these types of ideologically um, directed ideas, they, that's their bent. We have to fight. So, we'll see if we get much more into the philosophy of this. And again, I, I'm half expecting it to turn out to be a just a front or cover for like a revived Hydra or something, which will be a little bit disappointing because, as I said, like as an actual rallying cry for a dissident or political or um, thinks of itself as revolutionary movement, I could see it. Uh, within my understanding of this universe. So I'm hoping they don't do that, but I'm expecting them to. And we'll see where that goes. Other than that, um, you know, we have the introduction of U.S. Agent, who looks terrible in the suit, but honestly, since he's not, since he's supposed to be a completely subpar, wait, this guy's Captain America now type of character, the fact that he looks terrible in the suit is actually fine and fitting. I like that we are paralleling Sam's reservations and fears regarding the idea of taking up the shield and that he's really adamantly not okay with the idea of doing that. You see it in his eyes until he sees somebody else and he's like, wait, nobody was supposed to take that up. If anyone was going to, it was going to be me, but it should be nobody. So you get that glint in his eye, which I like, but they're paralleling his fears of responsibility with Bucky's fears of owning up to his own past actions. So it, it's it's interesting to see those sort of lined up next to each other with Sam fearing for his future and Bucky afraid of his past. So I'll be interested to see how strong those parallels continue to be drawn going forward. There's a lot of good setup for a strong story uh, in terms of the characters, good character driven, and we've got personal motivations for these guys that aren't gonna be just complete the mission, which is gonna be key because otherwise this could get real dull real quick. But this is just a lot of groundwork laying. It's solid groundwork, and I hope they build good stuff on top of it, but for right now I'm just like, okay, yeah. Where, where are we going from here? So uh, that'll about wrap it up for this one, folks. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You see the first episode? What'd you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. I have a Patreon, which hopefully there'll be a link for up there. The freaking YouTube's been giving me trouble lately about that. But in any case, there'll be a link in the description. Failing that, uh, this is my living. It is how I pay my bills. And your support is what allows me to keep doing this at all <laughs> at this point. Um, but even if you're not able to do that, like, share, subscribe, that all helps me out. But don't feel pressure to do that either because we take a relaxed attitude around here. So just come on back next time you need a break.